What's happening, Missouri Nation? Jason here. What is it? Seven minutes out. I see you all over in the chat. I see you, Lori Hansen. I see you on YouTube, Toku, Naeem, Amber, Lane Cummings. Good to see you, man. Jason Lewis says, check ride in three weeks. I love that. I love that. Stephanie, like the avatar, by the way, and says, check ride coming up. Dominic, what's happening? Good to see you. Miguel, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hey, Hunter, good to see you. Username Skydancer172, good username, good to see you. Lech from New Mexico, good to see you. Timothy, check ride next week. My friend, I can see the future. You're gonna pass with flying colors. Great, great, uh, you're gonna do amazing on it. Trevor, another check ride coming up. What's happening, Oscar Valella? Dean, good to see you. What's happening, everybody? Good to see you all on here. Hey, we're gonna be rolling. Where'd my timer go? About six minutes, six minutes, 30 seconds. We'll be rolling. I'll be back on in just a bit. Hang in tight, Lance Brown, Northern California. Jonathan Carlisle, Mo Smith 76. John Rich, what's happening? Steadfast Trucking LLC. You know, we were just in Nashville. Good to see you, Timothy. Eric Deagle, Valletta, say hi to John. Speaking of John, John Ballard in Austin, Texas. Good to see you. Michael Phillips, as always, good to see you. Check right in two weeks. Hey, six minutes, we'll be rolling. Grab, uh, grab a, a beverage. Your choice. I'm going. I'm going lemon, honey, and water tonight. Keeping it, you know, keeping it pretty uh, normal. And then we're going to dive into an outstanding mock check ride. I'll see you all back in six minutes. minutes we're gonna be rolling Dan Kasner good to see you man Paul what's happening my helicopter buddy good to see you on here as well hey mock check ride tonight if you're on Facebook will you tag somebody who needs to be here or if not like grab this link from YouTube and text it to them like dude you need to be here hey friend you need to be here I don't care how you say it just get get some people here uh, on YouTube, username Aviator Boss, as is for private pilot. We're gonna do private, instrument, commercial, and I even threw in an FOI question in there as well. So we're gonna be covering uh, a wide spectrum of questions tonight. John Johnson, John Hernandez, Chrissy Bade. We're, uh, I like the cat picture, by the way. Um, tag some friends, text them, tell them, hey, that really, that really, really tall guy, he's doing a mock check ride. You're going to want to be there. Starts in three minutes, Jordan Humphrey. Hodge, Rick, good to see you. Dos Santos, that is. Ron P. Check right in August. Awesome, awesome. Tag some friends, text them, tell them they should be here. I'll see you all back in three minutes. Starting promptly in three minutes.
M0A Nation, what is happening? Happy Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's, it's past a lot of our bedtime, so we're hanging out anyways. Hey, speaking of being past our bedtime, where are you watching from and how is the weather right now using only emojis? Right now, I would use the cloud and the lightning bolt and the rain emoji right now, because it is, it is, we are Florida in our afternoon thunderstorms right now is what we're up to. But hey, uh, tonight we are going to, how do I word this? Br bring the heat, I guess, is the only way to actually say it. I have got a mock check ride really just placed on my heart from questions from private pilot, literally all the way up to FOI. We. I can't promise, I can't promise when we're gonna finish by. We will finish when the job is done. Is, is that okay with everybody? One thing I can promise uh, is I will honor your time uh, with just focused instruction and just here to deliver some value as well. Let's look over at that chat. Lane Cummings, good to see you. It is snowing where Derek is. Derek, where, where are you that it is snowing? It's, it's May, it's actually June tomorrow. That, that doesn't seem appropriate to be snowing right now. We're, we're running around shorts over here and uh, everything else. Um, San Antonio, sunny in San Antonio. Eric Pittman, I saw you and your dad are watching. Mr. Pittman, good to see you uh, on here as well. Honolulu, Hawaii, what time is it in Hawaii right now? Chris, good to see you. He goes, I guess this makes up for in-flight coffee. I, I miss in-flight coffee as well. But my Saturdays now are spent at the ballet studio with Ella doing, <laughs> doing not me doing ballet. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm there. I'm the parent in charge. Uh, anyways, good to see you all. Danny in East Tennessee. Danny, we were in Nashville yesterday, literally. That's not East Tennessee, but anyways, good to see you. Uh, Kelly, Aubrey, Chris, Pat, Chumley in Fort Worth. Good to see you. Francisco in Puerto Rico. Our favorite coffee is from a place called Cafe Colau in Puerto Rico. Magda just ordered four bags. Trust me, I saw the credit card statement. Anyways, good to see you all on here. Welcome to the Mock Check Ride. As you know, we are in something we're calling Mock Check Ride May is what we're doing here today. And uh, ground school members, I've been doing... Where are my ground school members? Type in me in the chat. Where are my online ground school members? Ground school members, you have been getting mock check rides all this month. In fact, we just did one for two hours. I said, I'm gonna do a short mock check ride today. It ended up being two hours. I apologize for that. But our ground school members have just been loving on them with some mock check rides all this month. You all have been seeing it if you're not a member on YouTube, on Facebook as well. And tonight, well, it's your night to feel like an online ground school member in there a little bit as well. So really looking forward to sharing with you all just a bit more uh, on the mock check ride. So really, really looking forward to that. Ground school members, I'm waving back at you. Good to see you, Chris. Paul, Marilyn, great to see you. Hey, Rich Prescott, hope you're doing well. There's my buddy, Italian Mark. Good to see you, Joanna. So many, so many online ground school members on here. Thank you so much. Hey, like I said, one of my rules is I'm gonna honor your time, but before we do that, we need to go over some rules because there's rules to a mock check ride here tonight as well. So let me share with you just for 60 seconds how this mock check ride is gonna work. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna ask actual FAA check ride questions. You are gonna type in your correct answers. Now, uh, my, my lovely wife Magda is so smart. She's able to put the comments up there for you as well. So you don't have to be diving in to see other people's comments. You just gotta type your comment and then you can see she's syndicated YouTube and Facebook together with that as well. So that's very, very cool. So you can see all of that. Um, I'll ask the questions, you type in your correct answers. For some of the questions, we're gonna give away some prizes like some M0A tumblers, Aviation Mastery hardback edition signed, uh, and my favorite coffee mug, Aviate, Navigate, Caffeinate, in that order, with some stickers in there as well. We'll give away one of those prizes, uh, not all three at once. Uh, and, and again, it's not about who's the fastest typer. There are hundreds of people on here. I show over 500 between the two right now, and that number's gonna just keep going up. So I'll just pick a name, or Magda will pick a name, because the answer's gonna fly by quickly, uh, and then we'll uh, let you know how to get your prize there as well. Now, here's the real rule of all of this, and John Verselli, he knows this. My other online ground school members know this. My one main rule is this. I just ask that you play full out. If you don't know something, I want you to tell me. If, if Michael Phillips, if I ask a question and you go, 
I, I, I don't know. Just put in the chat, I don't know. Because Michael Phillips, when you have the humility to tell me and now 600 of your closest friends that you don't know something, first off, I love that humble attitude. And secondly, it allows me to tailor my instruction and, and my answers that I'm going to give you with that. Because this, while this is a mock check ride, it's not going to work like a typical, typical check ride. A typical check ride is like a deposition. Now, nobody, if you've ever been deposed, nobody enjoys it, right? But what is, how does your lawyer prep you going into a deposition? They say, Jason, answer the question and zip it. That's really hard for me to do. But that's how a check ride is. They ask you, you know, what is hypoxia? That's a lack of oxygen to the vital organs. Don't tell them that there's four types of it. Only if they ask, just zip it. Who out there knows what I mean? It's, it's hard. Who has a hard time zipping it sometimes? Who's like me that you just want to tell the examiner everything about yourself and everything about hypoxia? Anybody, any, any people have a problem using? Give me like a zipper emoji, that face of the zipper emoji on it or something like that. I have that problem. I'm not lawyers, the other lawyers like me because I just talk too much. That's, that's the problem with all of this. So what will happen today is I am going to teach. I may lead you in some questions. By that, I mean I may help you frame the question. I'm going to teach, and you're going to learn a lot today. But typically on a check ride, it's not, they say you don't learn anything, but you're going to learn something. And today here especially, I am going to teach. We're going to go get down some rabbit holes. Ground school members and those of you from in-flight coffee and everything else, you know this all too well. Sometimes they get on these tangents. I may have 40 perfectly prepared slides, and sometimes the best nuggets of wisdom come outside of those slides. So with your permission, we may do a few 10 degree left and right deviations with that. But that's a roundabout way of telling you, I need you to play full out. If you don't know John Rick, if you don't know uh, Brandon Schultz, I need you to tell me so I can tailor my instruction. That way, if all now 700 of us get this thing right, well, we're going on to the next question. That's, that's pretty good. But if one person doesn't know, I'll stay here all night till that one person gets it. Right? I hope we all have that same kind of attitude. Now, another rule with this, if I call you out because your answer is incorrect, it is from a place of love. If I say, uh, hey, Cole Young, man, that's good, but I would answer it this way. You know, that would be a little better. Or Sarah Thompson, that's cool, but add this to it instead. I'm not calling you out to embarrass you in front of all your friends. I'm calling you out to save you six or seven or 800 bucks. What's a going check right in your area right now? I want you to get the questions wrong here with me than when you've paid six, seven, 800 bucks for cash. Isn't that funny how a contractor of the federal government only wants cash? That's a webinar for another day. But anyways, I'm not calling you out to pick on you and embarrass you. I'm calling you out because it gives a perfect illustration and it's coming from a place of love. You all give myself and my wife and our team here feedback from a place of love. We're going to do the exact same thing and that's a fruitful relationship in everything that we do. So with that said, uh, again, if you love all of this, if you love these mock check rides, you just missed four of them. I did with the online ground school members, but you know you can do a trial of our course anytime, m0atrial.com to check it out. That's, that's yours, and that's my one little sales pitch uh, for the evening. Other than that, it's just delivering value. So can we all agree? Type in me in the chat. If you agree with the rules, you will play full out. If you don't know, you'll tell us that you don't know. And number two, if I pick on you, I'm not really picking on you. I'm calling you out from a place of love, and I expect you to do the same. Call me out from a place of love. I may misspeak tonight. I, I may make a mistake tonight. Call me out from a place of love as well, and we are going to get along just great. So my prayer before this live stream with Magnus, my witness, was to save just one life tonight. You may say, how does prepping for a check ride save a life? Uh, I think we're going to accomplish that uh, humbly tonight. So I see lots of me's from Tyler, from Brent, from Brady, from Timothy, from John Rich. He affirms it. Eric Deagle says he will try to play by the rules. He, he likes to push right up against, see where that line is, cross it real quick and come back. But that's A-OK. -okay. Caleb Headings. Douglas Kingsbury, Andrew Bryson, you all. Greg Schmidt, you all are on. Mindy Oxley, you all are on. All right, let's dive into it. Let's practice this. Um, by the way, John Duncan has a vision jet as his profile picture. I just, I just saw a vision jet go flying by as fast as a vision jet is with all the comments. There, there it is. Hey, Donna, good to see you. I just saw Donna, uh, by the way, as well. Um, anyways, let's dive into it. Question number one. Now, I need you. I need you to answer this 
how you would for the check ride you have coming up. Is it private? Is it instrument? Is it commercial? Is it CFI? Whatever check ride you have coming up, that's how I want you to answer it. Here's question number one. We're going to start with the easy and we're going to work our way towards the more advanced. Hey, what are your privileges and limitations? Type it in the chat. What are your privileges and limitations? Again, if you are an aspiring private pilot, please tell me your private pilot limitations. If you are an aspiring commercial pilot or current commercial pilot, tell me your privileges and limitations. Practice giving something away too. We're going to give away a hardback copy of Aviation Mastery the book with two great stickers as well with that. Let's see. Hey Holly, good to see you on here. John Dela Cruz, good to see you here. All right, what are your private pilot limitations? So Mallory, what I mean by that, and Mallory, you put a great answer in there, but as a private pilot, Mallory, what are you able to do? It's one thing to tell me airplane single engine land, but what, how you answered that question, Mallory, was you just told me what category and class you're flying. I'm private pilot airplane single engine land. That's category and class. As a private pilot airplane single engine land, what can you do? Or, unfortunately, it's easier, like Robbie Taylor did, what can't you do? What, what can't you do? Stephanie Wilson, you said you can't charge anyone for flying. Can you explain? Like, that means I can accept zero dollars? Is that what you mean? Like, I can't take any money. What if, what if you want to split it with a buddy? There's a certain word um, you can use. Hey, um, let's look at some others. Uh, let's see here. Um, Mike, same thing. Mike said you can't fly for compensation. While, while that, that part is true, is there any universe, universe Mike, where you could, you could receive money? Is there any, any universe where that could happen? Um, hey, Mindy, you used a really interesting word, pro rata share. Also on Facebook, Tesso, pro, you guys, now everyone's using this word, pro rata share. Can someone explain to me what pro rata share is, please? Lane Cummings, that's a big word. And bonus points, is it pro rata or pro rata? I, I use both, so I don't offend anybody. I don't know, I don't know what's right uh, anymore. <laughs> Mike Alby said pro rats, share. <laughs> I think auto correct did you dirty on that one, Mike, but it's all good. Um, hey, uh, Jamie Minton, you used a fun word too, holding out. Do you want to explain to me what holding out is? Now, the reason I, I, I shared all this, the reason, the reason I shared all of this is one reason. You can illustrate a check ride pitfall because did any of you not know the definition of pro rata, pro rata share, but use the word? Well, I can't accept compensation or higher, but I can fly for pro rata share. The next question is gonna be what's pro rata share? Or some of you use the definition, uh, oh, I can't hold out for my commercial pilots. What's the next question that examiner is gonna ask? What on earth is holding out, please? Because that's not a normal word to use, right? That's not a normal marketing term that we use. What does it mean to hold out? What do these definitions mean? So before you drop nuggets of wisdom or perceived wisdom, let's make sure we divide them as well. Look at uh, Vincent McDonoghue. Pro rata means you're not paying less uh, than your share of the flight cost when it's the number of people sharing. Vincent, you are wise beyond your years, my friend. Um, Let's go ahead. Let's, let me share with you some private pilot limitations to get your juices flowing here. You ready? Okay, so first one at the top of your screen there, you know you cannot pay less than that pro rata share of the operating expenses is the definition of a flight with passengers. What are example of pro rata share? Well, these expenses must be shared including fuel, oil, like who's gonna divide up their oil, but okay. I guess if you buy a court, it's easy to do. Airport fees or rental fees. So let me let me give you let me give you the example here with this. Um, we go ahead and we call up and say um, uh, Matthew Oswald uh, and and Julius Goth are going flying together, both private pilots. You guys are renting from the school. You're both private pilots. Can you both split that rental fee? Absolutely, you split that rental fee. That's part of the pro rata share of things. Let's go back to our slide here real quick. We cannot fly for hire. 
That is accurate. You cannot fly for compensation or hire. More specifically, I can't transport people or cargo for compensation or hire. We do have some privileges. Did you know some of these fun privileges here, real quick? You can demonstrate an aircraft to prospective buyer as long as you're an aircraft salesperson or broker and have at least 200 hours of logged time. Interesting, right? Interesting. Did you know you may act as pilot in command of an aircraft towing a glider as long as you meet the requirements of 14 CFR 6169? Did you know you may act as PIC of an aircraft in connection with a business or employment if it's only incidental to that business or employment, does not carry passengers or property for compensation or hire? By the way, sorry, sorry about the, the lagging and everything else. That's our, we got, we're in the middle. It, remember I told you the emoji I would use would be lightning and thunder right now. So it's, it's nasty, nasty weather. So I think it's lagging for everybody. Is it better now while I take my tea break? I think it's better for everybody. We got a nasty storm uh, around us now. So I think that's causing us to lag up a little bit. All right, connection's better, Charlie says. Okay, I wanna go over that last point one more time. Um, and, and this will be, um, this could be on a check ride. You ready? You may act as PIC of an aircraft in connection with any, I'm at the, the last bullet point there. The, any business or employment, if it's only incidental to that business or employment and does not carry passengers or property for compensation or hire. What does that mean? Let me explain it to you. Is, is Chris Stater out there? Chris Stater is one of our phenomenal, Magda saw him, hey Chris Stater, and hey the Paul Stater family. Chris Stater, one of our phenomenal lifetime uh, online ground school members. Chris Stater uh, works for a company called True Homes, I believe it is, right Chris? Um, he is the CTO. He's also a private pilot with an instrument rating and owns a Piper Dakota. You all saw Chris uh, in the Fly with Jason Sweepstakes series that we did and flying with his wife, Cindy. Chris is based in Charlotte and they've got some business they need to do over in Winston-Salem. I don't know if that's far or not. I'm, I'm making up, I don't know North Carolina, but so the boss tells Chris, Chris, you're a pilot. Can you fly us over to Winston-Salem for, uh, for this meeting? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely he can. Now, Chris cannot be compensated for his flying, but he is being paid, but he's being paid as the CTO of the company. His paycheck is not going to increase because he is flying the boss to Winston-Salem to close this business deal. The flying is incidental to his business they were gonna drive anyways, right? If Chris drove his car, they're not gonna pay him to drive, like as a driver, right? No, he's still just the CTO. He just happened to be, was willing to take his car. Instead, he's taking his plane. There's Chris Stater, by the way, in the chat. That is how that works. Does that make sense uh, to everybody? Okay, you ready for the next one? Let's keep moving forward here because I'm already behind schedule somehow. You ready? Hey, what documents must be on board your aircraft? What documents must be on board your aircraft? What documents must be on board your aircraft? I'm gonna grab a sip of tea. You all type your answers in. While you're doing that, I really, Mac, could you scroll up to John Ballard's comment so I can read it again? John Ballard on YouTube made a great comment while you are typing. Incidental would mean you basically would take the trip with you flew, GA, drove, airlines, et cetera. It uncouples the purpose, exactly. The purpose isn't to fly. They were gonna drive or they would, they would rent a car or they would airline or they, they would get there somehow. Flying's just incidental to the whole situation is what that really means. Well said, Mr. Ballard, well said. All right, you all keep using this acronym, Matthew Oswald, Matt uh, Massor, I think it was, Arrow. Does anybody want to explain to me what this mythical arrow is? Uh, Napoleon did a good job of it. Constantine, what does arrow mean? Christy Bade, Donna, good to see you, by the way. What on earth is this arrow you all speak of? And some of you are typing an arrow with two R's. Some of you are typing an arrow with one R, right? Explain to me what this mysterious arrow acronym is. 
quickly. You got 10 seconds here as well. And I'm going to pick a winner on, uh, on this one as well. Uh, it's going to go to, it's going to go up, 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 up. Let me just make sure their answer is right. Up, 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 right there. Um, no, not that. I wanted that one, but that one's not right. Um, I want somebody who typed the whole thing out. Find somebody who typed the whole thing out. Oh, we know him. That's not fair. Hold on. I don't know the, hold on. Right, yeah, up, up one. Jonathan Rubio, my friend, you, right there, there's your shining picture. It's on, it's, on, it's on document, right? It's documented now. You just got yourself a copy of Aviation Mastery hardback book. I will sign it uh, as well, my friend. It'll be heading your way. Hey, here's what you need to do, though, Jonathan. I need you to email Sarah, Sarah at m0a.com. Here's the rule, though. Everyone knows the rule. The subject line, Jonathan, must say, I'm a winner. Jason said so, right? Positive affirmations. And then when you introduce, instead of most people say, hey, hello, you have to say, what do you have to say, Eric Pittman? Hey, y'all. You have to say, hey, y'all, and then, hey, y'all, I'm Jonathan Rubio. I won the Aviation Mastery book on the webinar. You just, just got to put it in there, okay? It's, it's that important. All right, our answer, by the way, our answer that we can show here, our answer is arrow. Arrow. We need our airworthiness certificate, our registration. This radio certificate will come back to, actually, let me just stop there for a second. Airworthiness certificate and registration certificate. You ready? You ready for, you, somebody's gonna learn something here. You ready? Ground school members, you can't participate because you all know this answer. You have an airworthiness and you have a registration and they're in a clear pocket somewhere in your plane. Sometimes on the pilot side by your left leg, some Cherokees put it in the back by the baggage compartment, but they're in a clear pocket in the airplane. Which one legally needs to be in front? Airworthiness or registration? Put it in the chat. Which, there's only one right way to do it. And some of you are going, I just thought they both had to be in the pocket. No, one's got to be in front of the other. I've got it highlighted right here. Put it in the chat. Which one needs to be in front of the other? Magda, could we reset the comments there where it says all the way at the bottom? Yeah, thanks. Great. Which one, which one needs to be in front of the other? Put it in the chat. And ground school members, you can't participate. You're gonna, you know the answer. You know the answer. Alexis, you got 50-50 shot. Try the other one. Um, let's see. Hey, Brooks, 50-50 shot. Try the other one. Try, I'm, again, I'm only picking on you because I love you guys. Right? Let's see. All right. You ready? No person may operate. This is a 91203 paragraph B. No person may operate a civil aircraft unless the airworthiness certificate required by paragraph A of this section or the special authorization issued under 91715 is displayed at the cabin or cockpit entrance so that it is legible to passengers or crew. Your airworthiness certificate needs to be up front. Dean, look at you showing off on YouTube. Airworthiness has to be visible to passengers. Wisdom just fell right out of his pocket. Good job. Airworthiness. So who all is gonna go to their airplane next time and treat their document check a little bit differently? Because I guarantee you, some of you and in your clubs and your schools, the registration might accidentally be in front and you're just gonna save the world and put the airworthiness in front as well. Hey, let's continue with our acronym here. So we need our airworthiness and it needs to be in front of our R, our registration, in our clear pocket. And then some of you all gave me this other R for a radio certificate or a radio license. And then you added the same verbiage I have there, international flights only. Well, can I tell you something? Because I learned, I learned this too. I was always taught you need a radio station license anytime you fly international. Well, I was thinking, and we, before COVID, we used to fly international a lot. Our international is the Bahamas. That's the only international flying we really get. And I was thinking, I have a radio station license for the airplane and for myself. And I've been to the Bahamas a lot and no one's ever asked me for one. So that got me thinking, either the Bahamas isn't doing their job or something's up. So I went digging. Bahamas doesn't require a radio station license. Mexico 
doesn't require a radio station license. I started going down all the little islands, right? Past the Bahamas, into Antigua and St. Martin. I, I, I dream of taking to do my zoo down there anyways. It wasn't until I got to Turks and Caicos that I found that a radio station license was actually required. In fact, for the majority of you, unless you're up uh, with Dan and uh, a few others in, in Minnesota and up north, your aircraft radio station license is only required for Canada. Do you, again, I learned something making this presentation for you all. Do I need a license? This is from the Canadians, can, the, was the CAA, I had to think about that for a second. From the CAA, do I need a license for the aeronautical radio requirement on board my aircraft? And it gives you some reasons. Basically, if you are flying a US registered aircraft into Canada, you will need a radio license. Will that be on your check ride? I don't know, but did you learn something, right? You, now you got all this great aviation trivia to quiz your friends about the airworthiness up front, and now you know all about Canada. Hey, let's continue on this acronym before I take us on too many tangents, all right? Um, next on our aero, oh, sorry, I gotta go back a slide. Next on our aero uh, acronym, you ready? Owner's manual, or sometimes called our operator's manual. Now, I wanna be very, very specific here. This is not your POH, Pilot's Operating Handbook. A POH is geared towards you, James. It's geared to, towards you, Jason Larkin. It's a pilot's operating handbook. You need your God-given owner's manual, right from Textron, right from Piper, right from Cirrus, whatever that may be, that in 1972, when 23 Mike Zulu was born, well, that's the document that came out. That's the one you need. Now, you can use a more updated POH for yourself, but in the aircraft, you need the owner's manual, or the operator's handbook, as it's sometimes called, uh, that came with the airplane from Wichita, or from Duluth, or from wherever that aircraft was actually born. Lastly, the W in there is our weight and balance. Our weight and balance. And this is not, you know, Sean Hempel and I decided to make our weight and balance. You know, Sean Hempel, based on his profile picture, looks like 200 pounds of pure muscle. I clock in at 190, I lost a little weight, unfortunately. Muscle, right? Right, Magda? She's not even listening. Um, we do our weight and balance. That's not that kind of weight and balance. This is the weight and balance that, again, either came with your aircraft or the last time it had serious maintenance, paint, new avionics, whatever it may be, that's the weight and balance we're talking about. Now, one more thing I wanna add, and I wanna add it under the O, if we go back in our acronym uh, here. Owner's manual. Operator's Handbook, um, Operating Limitations. Uh, there's a lot of O words you could put here to check that box. I like the word Operating Limitations here as well because that also says, and the far aim does say it, all your placards. Your placards need to be in the airplane as well. If your Cessna 150 says spins prohibited, that's a required placard. Required placards need to be in there as well. All right, fun stuff there. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, this will be hard to do. I'll tell you what. Tr we're, and by the way, we're jumping subjects. We're not going to like stick with any one subject. We're going to go squirrel and just bounce around subjects. I got a lot of stuff to cover, and it's already 8.30. Translate for me here just the remarks section of this METAR. Just the remarks. So after RMK remarks, translate for me just the remarks section of this METAR, please. Just the remarks. Just the remarks. And Lawrence, I saw your comment there about there's no reg for weight mounts. You're gonna find the reg in part 23, I wanna say. Part 23, I'm almost positive. I might have quoted on the last slide. I'll look here in a second. But there is, it is regulatory. It's just not in our little far aim. Remarks, translate them for me. What does that AO2 mean? And what is LTG, DSNT, oh, and then that weird Q, DS there. What on earth is happening? Adam, I like your humility. He said, you got me on remarks. 
<laughs> I like that attitude. Miss seeing you on in-flight coffee. I promise we'll, we'll bring it back soon. What on earth? Chris, I like it. He says, Jason, it just means don't go fly. Like, do I need to translate this for you? Mic drop, walk away. I love it. Good job, Chris. All right. David, I, I, like, I like the attempt. Mindy, it is that, but what type is it? Who, who said this was their airline interview? Can we go back up? That's a good comment. Uh, they're going by so fast. Kevin Cook said, this was on my airline interview. <laughs> I told you this is a private pile, mock check ride. Maybe, maybe I, I, I made us overachievers. All right, let's leave this up here quickly. Let me get my cursor on your screen so we can teach a little bit. Hey, Deirdre, good to see you. Oh, the precipitation discriminator. I, I, you just got an extra gold, you saved us on the wind shear video and you get an extra gold scar, star for knowing that one. That's good. You ready? RMK stands for remarks. AO2, like Deirdre said, AO2 means this field, and I don't know where OFK is, but someone said that's their home field, so tell me where that is, please. AO2 means they do have an automatic precipitation discriminator at the field. Boom. What on earth does that mean? If an AO2 means they do have an automatic precipitation discriminator, it can say, Jason, it's snowing, it's hailing, it's raining, it's misting, it's sleeting. It can discriminate between the different types of precipitation. As opposed to if it said AO1, that means it does not have an automatic precipitation discriminator. AO1 says something's falling from the sky. I don't know what it is. It could be money, it could be rain. I don't know what it is, but something's falling from the sky. And AO2 says, yeah, it's rain. Yeah, it's, it's uh, sleet or it's hail, whatever it is. AO2, automatic precipitation discriminator. Look at this, We're, I get excited about this sort of stuff, sorry. LTG, lightning. DSNT, distant. You ready for this one? AL is all, QDS, quadrants. Lightning, distant, all quadrants. Show of hands. Who's making a no-go decision right now? Lightning distant all quadrants. I think I'll go. I think I'll just stay right here and watch all the other crazy people try to get back in. You know, Magda and I love do the, the summer storms have started. And one of our sick hobbies right now, so bad. We get whenever there's a bad storm, we look on FlightAware and see all the crazy people trying to how they're scud running back in. I think that is so silly. And I just see all these crazy people trying to get back in. Anyways, let's continue here. On our meets are. Then we get into the exact temperature and dew point. That, the T means temperature, temperature. The zero means the number is positive. 15, slap a decimal right here, 15.0 degrees Celsius. And that correlates up here. The next one is our dew point. Zero means the number is positive. 13.3, our dew point, right? We round to here at 13, but it's actually 13.3. Three, all right? One more question here, because this is fun. Well, let me just read the whole thing. Did we ever figure out where, where OFK is? I, I apologize that I, no disrespect to KOFK. I'm sure it's a great airport. I just don't know where it is. On the 17th at 1627 Zulu, this is an automated weather report. The winds are from 100 at 11 knots, so from 100 at 11 knots, 10 statute miles of visibility. Then all of a sudden we get to this VCTS. Well, you, got, you have to read this backwards because VC means vicinity, TS means thunderstorms. Thunderstorms in the vicinity. Overcast 3500. Um, Temperature 1.5, dew point 1.3, altimeter 2.9 or 8.9. It is Norfolk, by the way. I apologize to all my people in Norfolk, Virginia. Hopefully I pronounced that. Nor is it Norfolk or Nor? It's like when I go to, to Louisville. I guess I like Louisville. I'm, I'm working on it. Hey, can we show that METAR one more time? There's, there's one, more, one more bit of, of sharing here. So we just shared, we read this backwards. TS, thunderstorms, VC, vicinity. Bonus points and a 
Aviate, Navigate, Caffeinate mug is coming your way if you can tell me what on earth is a vicinity. It should be important because if they're telling us thunderstorms in the vicinity, wouldn't you like to know where the vicinity is or what the definition of a vicinity is? Because you'll see this all the time. Showers in the vicinity, thunderstorms in the vicinity. We talk about this vicinity, but no one needs, seems to understand the definition of a vicinity. What is the actual definition of a vicinity? Chad Cody, you are not allowed to participate because I just shared this with you two weeks ago. <laughs> Ground school members, you can't participate because I just told you this two weeks ago. But you were right, Chad Cody. You were right. And I looked it up after our webinar. I even talked about it today. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, Jennifer Gates, you're not allowed to participate, you little cheater. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I, I, I'll go with. I'll go with one up. No, nope, one up. One up. I will go. I will accept. No, no, down one. Down one. That's fine. I will accept William Cash. William Cash. Great last name too. William Cash. Five nautical miles. That's part of it. It's technically five to ten statute miles. Aviate, navigate, caffeinate. William Cash. You have to. I'm not going to hunt you down. I need you to email Sarah. Sarah at mzuri.com. Subject line, I'm a winner, Jason said so. You have to introduce yourself. Hey y'all, my name's Mr. Cash. Please send my mug here. All right. Where on earth did that come from? Vicinity. Because I looked in the pilot controller glossary. I worked, looked all through our hymnal here. I could not find anything about a vicinity. So I had to say, FAA, I need more help. I had to go to the real source, which is ICAO. Mag, I'll have to take the chat down to show this real quick. You ready for this? So I found this document. Look at where this is from. Who doesn't want to join this group? This is from the Aerodrome Meteorological Observation and Forecast Study Group, AMOVSG. Who does not want to, show of hands, who would join the Aerodrome Meteorological Observation and Forecast Study Group? If, if somebody makes a Facebook group and invites me, I'll be there. Uh, that is a study group <laughs> I want to be in. Like, that sounds super nerdy, but I'm all about it. So if we go back to our Aerodrome Meteorological Observation and Forecast Study Group, of which I'd like to be the, the honorary president, we come all the way over here to conclusion um, as a recommendation to Annex 3, Appendix 3. This is ICAO, by the way. Paragraph 4.4.2.6, add the words or point of observation, the description of the term vicinity, such that vicinity becomes between approximately 8 and 16 kilometers. Thanks, ICAO, for that one. You know, I don't know. Magda's over here going, I know kilometers perfectly. I don't understand kilometers at all. Um, 8 and 16 kilometers of an aerodrome reference point or a location where the observation is being made should be only used with METAR specie, present weather conditions, etc. To put it into plain English, it's 5 to 10 statute miles is the definition of a vicinity. Air, what was it called? The aerodrome something study. I'm all about it. I don't know. I can't remember the name of it. Had a great acronym. I'm all about it. Uh, I'm going to be joining that. Justin says no to join the group. I'm all about joining the study group, Justin. It's, it's okay. All right. Coach Ray says, I want to be in the naming IFR fixes group. Uh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about that. Let's, let's dive into it. Let's look at another question here. You can give me, and ground school members, you can't participate. You just had the same question like six hours ago. All right. You can give me the acronym of this one only if you promise me you know the acronym and what it is. All right? Pre-flight action. What is required pre-flight action? What is required pre-flight action? That's what I want to know. And yes, I meant statute on the last one. If I said nautical or if my slide said nautical, I apologize. Statute's what I meant to say. Or if I didn't say any, statute's what I meant. Ichiro, you're always the fastest typer. How fast is your internet connection? I feel like every live stream, that's the fastest typer. You must be on fiber internet. Lane, are you allowed to participate? I, I think so. John De La Cruz, that's good. Cram, that's good. Holly, you missed the webinar today. We all, I actually mentioned you on the webinar today because we were talking about Cirrus's. You got it. Hey, I'm going to give away a, the MSRA Tumblr for this one. Valletta, I know you know that, but did John know that? That, that's why I want to know. 
Johanna? Um, kind of. That I'm looking more the regulatory nature in Part 91 that is that the FAA actually defines as required pre-flight action. Jonathan Diaz, that's not the acronym. Uh, Amfrey, that's not the acronym I'm looking for. Um, that's that's something you do, and that's awesome to be a safer, smarter pilot. I have a bunch of you putting. Let me just share with you. I have a bunch of you putting in like PAVE and I'm safe. While those are awesome acronyms and there is some regulatory nature around them, they are not as regulatory. Yeah, Ranji, you can't answer this one. They're not as regulatory as 91103. Victor Gomes, thank you. Thank you. My, thank you, my friend. You know what, Victor, I'm going to give you the M-Zero Tumblr for your humility just for saying that you don't know. And you know what? I, uh, I love humility. That is awesome. Victor, email Sarah, sarah at msray.com. I'm a winner. Jason said so. And tell her you won the Tumblr because of your humility. That's what it really is. Valetta, I saw your comment that John does know. I was just picking on John because I like John. How's John's foot, by the way? That's what we all, I mean, John stopped a TBM Avenger with his foot. Great guy. All right. So no, I'm not talking I'm safe. No, I'm not talking pave. I'm not talking the five Ps. I'm not talking safety. I'm not talking eight tomato flames. Why do we have so many acronyms in aviation? I, I don't know why. I'm talking 91103, required pre-flight action. The acronym is NW as in Northwest Craft with a K like the macaroni and cheese. Now you won't forget it because who doesn't like macaroni and cheese? I had some for dinner and I'm not even lying. That's, that's my pre-webinar meal. I was carb loading uh, to get ready for you guys. 91103, Northwest Craft. Okay, let me read to you 91103. Ground school members, just sit tight because I'm gonna do the same thing I just did on the webinar four or five hours ago. So sit tight, mzuratrial.com if you wanna become an online ground school member. All right, 91103, you ready? Pre-flight action. Each pilot in command, that's you. Each pilot in command before beginning a flight should become familiar with all available information concerning that flight period. That's a pretty bold statement. I should become, as the pilot in command, I am regulatory required to become familiar with all available information concerning that flight. I think that's a genius, where are my lawyers at? Is that, is that good contract law? I feel like that's just like, that's a pretty strong catch-all. This information must include, they add. So all information, and then here's the stuff you really must include, and that's where we get our NW craft from. Listen to this, because so many people ignore paragraph A. For a flight under IFR, and they stop and go, oh, that's IFR, that's not me, so I'll go to the next one. But that's not true. There's no comma there, there's no period. For a flight under IFR, or, you ready for it? A flight not in the vicinity of the airport. And you thought this mock check ride was just a random slew of information. We just learned the term vicinity. So for an IFR flight, or a flight that is not within the vicinity, five to 10 miles from the airport. So if, if that's your practice area, you could stay in the vicinity. This doesn't apply to you. But for any IFR flight or a flight that is not in the vicinity, not in the vicinity of the airport, the pilot should become familiar with weather reports and forecasts, fuel requirements, and listen to this one, alternatives available. Not, we misread this so often. Look at the slide. I actually fixed it from the ground school webinar as well. It's not alternates available. It's alternatives. Because what they're saying is even if you leave the vicinity as a private pilot, I know there is no, we often say there's no regulatory requirement. In fact, when you fill out your flight plan form and it says alternate, you say, oh, it's, it's a VFR flight plan. I don't need an alternate. I beg to differ that 91103, it says we need to become familiar with our alternatives available if the planned flight cannot be completed. The FAA wants you to always have a backup. If you think, like the example I used earlier, Chris Stater going from Charlotte to Winston-Salem, and I have no clue how far that is, probably not that far of a flight, I've had to guess, he should become familiar with alternatives available along that route of flight. Oh, I can divert to 
Raleigh, I, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of North Carolina cities that probably have airports. I can divert to these airports. That's what he has to become familiar with, alternatives. Don't read it like so many of us do, and I taught for such a long time, alternates available, alternatives available. And any known traffic delays, of which the pilot command has been advised by ATC. What's the example of a traffic delay? Just the other day, Mag and I were leaving Naples. It was a gorgeous day. We were taking off out of Naples to head up to the office in Ocala. And there was a jet that was trying to go to Teterboro. And they said, hey, Teterboro's on a ground stop right now. They wanted us to hold you here on the ground at Naples for half an hour. He wasn't too happy about it because the weather in Naples was gorgeous. But the weather in Teterboro was garbage. So but he held on the ground at Naples. They'd rather you hold on the ground 30 minutes at Naples for your arrival slot than in a holding pattern somewhere over Teterboro burning gas. And now they gotta do something with you and the weather's not good. And it's icing up and everything else. All right, paragraph B. For any flight, runway lengths at airports of intended use and the following, take off and landing distance information. It goes on to um, aircraft performance, elevation, slope, weight, wind, temperature, density, altitude, all of those things. Show of hands, type in me in the chat, because I saw so many of you talk about it earlier. Who here had NW Craft 91103 on your check ride? Just type in me in the chat, because I, I, some of you are glossing over. I can see it right now going, this, this Jason guy, he, he just geeks out on nerdy stuff. And while that is true, watch all the me's that are about to pop up in the chat right now for people that have done at least a private pilot check ride. I guarantee this was on their check ride. Look at all the me's starting to come in already. This will be on your check ride. This isn't just Jason being a nerd. I know I can be one sometimes. This will be on your check ride. All right. Thank you for everybody for, uh, for typing that in there. Important, important stuff. And um, if you're coming in late or anything like that, this is all recorded. So you're welcome to go back and catch up later. Hey, let me keep moving forward because I've got so much to share and, and we haven't even gotten deep yet. You ready? Uh, hey, Robbie. Hey, Devin. This is a tough one. All right, we're going to go deep real quick. Here we go. Medicals. I'm going to use myself as an example here. I earned, this is a real story. I earned my first class medical on November 20th, 2017. What are my, Jason's, current privileges? And when do I need to do my next medical? And before the jokes come out, Coach Ray and Eric Deagle, I am under 40. I did just have a birthday, but I am under 40. Don't Google how old is Jason Shepard. It's not true. I'm not really that old. I'm under 40. I earned my first class medical on November 20th, 2017. What are my current privileges and when do I need my next medical? Anastasia, you are so, 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 so close. Teo, oh, spot on, beautiful. David, you are so, 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 so close. Sierra, thank you. Andreas, you are also so, so, so close. You're a month off, you're a month off. Mateo, you're my only correct answer of like 700 people watching this right now. What do you want to give Mateo, Magda? Magda says a coffee mug and stickers. Mateo, also Magda's father's name, Mateo. Um, you're exactly right. There you are. There's Mateo. Mateo, email Sarah, sarah at m0a.com. I'm a winner. Jason says so. It's coming your way, my friend. It's coming your way. Let's, let's go find some more. Let's go find some more. Wait, wait, wait. Coach Ray said something about my beard. Can you go find that? I don't... Got to watch that. You know how he is. He's tricky sometimes. It sneaks up on you, Coach Ray. You'd be surprised. I'm teasing. Let's go find it. Donna, you are so, 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 so close. Add one month to it. I'll explain why. Riyadh, so, so close. So close. DV Pro One, so close. Everyone who's so close, I need you to add one month. I will, I'll explain why. There's Sarah. Hey, Sarah, good to see you. Hey, y'all. Sarah, and Sarah, if they email you and don't use the subject line, I'm a winner, Jason said so, and if they don't say, hey, y'all, they, they are disqualified. I just want to make that very, very clear. All right. Let's, we're, this is about to get really, really deep. Are you ready? Um, Eric Pittman, can we save Eric Pittman's question? What situation would first class revert to a third class? Ooh, 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 we can go deep. All right, you ready? Thank you, Eric Pittman, save that, save that. Cause, and then go read Hunter's comment below yours, Eric, because she's spot on. All right, let's show the question real quick. As Kevin Hart says, it's about to go down. 
you all think I, I didn't, didn't know pop culture. I, I've watched a movie once or twice. I do have a Netflix subscription. I earned my first class medical on November 20th, 2017. What are my current privileges and when do I need my next medical? I'm under 40. All right, you ready? If my medical is issued under the age of 40, it is good for five years, 60 calendar months. Now here's what you need to understand, you ready? It is still a first class medical. So this is what Eric Pittman, before we get into the dates, let's take that down for a second because they're gonna to get too excited. Eric Pittman asked, well, when would your medical revert to a third class medical? Well, it doesn't. It's priv the privileges of it do. In fact, standing here today, I have a first class medical. Eric Pittman, it says first class medical on it. Jason Shepard did all the rigmarole that requires of a first class medical, and it's not always fun, right? Did all that stuff. It's still a first class medical. However, because of time, I only have third class privileges left on it, which are fine with me because all I want to do is instruct anyways, right? I don't have airline aspirations or anything like that. I'm fine on just a third class medical. Now, let's go back. Let's go back. So it's still a first class medical, just different privileges. How long is it good for? Well, I would exercise, I'm, I'm over here. I'm right, I'm, I, where'd my cursor go? I'm over here. I still am gonna exercise first or second class privileges. I'll explain in just a second. 12 calendar months because I'm under 40. I'm gonna do that from November 20th, 2017, the date of issuance, until December 30th, 20, 31st, 2018. What on earth does that mean? Let me, let's go straight to the FA for this, you ready? A first class medical certificate. So a first class medical certificate is valid for the remainder of the month of issue plus Pause, time out right there. The remainder of the month plus this time. So I did my medical, that's the only time I could get in to do it, on the 20th. Those from November 20th to November 30th, those are free days. Free, F-R-E-E, -E, free days. Free 10 days. Because show them the reg one more time, Magda. It says, second, first bullet point, a first class medical certificate is valid for the remainder of the month of issue plus this. So it would behoove you, Missouri Nation, to go get your medical on the first or the second or the third of the month because you get that whole month free and then everything starts from there. Does, does that make sense for everybody? You get that whole month free and then it starts. Now, back to our slide. On our slide, it says, if I'm over 40, first bullet point is six calendar months. If I'm under 40, it's 12 calendar months. 12 calendar months for operating requiring a first class medical certificate if the airman has not reached 40 on or before the date of examination. Now, second class is exactly the same. It says 12 calendar months for operations requiring a second class medical or. This is the remainder of the month plus. So when I earned my first class medical on November 20th, 2017, under 40, I can do first class for 12 months or second class for 12 months. It's not a first class for 12 months, then a second class for 12 months, and then a third class. It doesn't work that way. My first and second class privileges, because I'm under 40, were operating simultaneously. Over 40, it would work a little differently. Over 40, it'd be first class for six months. Then the remaining six months, it would drop to a second class privileges, and then it would live out its life, finish out its life as a third class medical. Now, something else important here with this, that if we can show this real quick. This is based on, and this is your third class, by the way. Notice what I bolded there, if the airman has not reached the age of 40 on or before the date of examination. Where are all my under 40 year olds at? Make some noise, okay? Promise me, when you are 39, 364 days old, you will go earn your medical. Even if it's not due, even if you still have like a year or two left on it, go earn your medical. 
because you lock in that five years, that 60 calendar months, you lock that in because it's based on the date of issuance. It's based on the date of issuance, all right? So promise me, when you are 39, 364 days, you will go get and earn your medical. One last time, one last shebang under 40, be good for that time frame. Now, here's another promise. And I don't care if you're like John De La Cruz, who, you know, halfway into his 20s. He's got a baby face too. I met him just at Sun and Fun the other day. But he's one big muscle. I wouldn't fight him or anything like that. Promise me, I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're old. I don't care if you're somewhere in between. Make me a promise that you will go earn basic med. I know I'm not, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm on my soapbox now. I apologize. Make me a promise that you will go earn, can you just type in, I promise, put it in the chat, I promise to go earn basic med. Let me just tell you what basic med is real quick. I got a slide, Maggie, you'll have to take down the chat though real quick, all right? Basic med, you ready for this? Basic med, if you've earned an FAA medical at least once, and there are some conditions where you need to get a special issuance just once, those are on the right-hand side of your screen, let me, let me tell you this. You can fly an aircraft authorized not to carry more than six occupants. That's a Cherokee 6. Has a maximum certificated takeoff weight of not more than 6,000 pounds. You carry not more than five passengers. So you can have a Cherokee 6, but you can only put five booties in it. That's okay. Operate VFR and IFR in the U.S. under 18,000 feet, not exceeding 250 knots. You can't fly for compensation or for hire. But let me tell you something. You can still fly. Now, it's not gonna allow you to have your flying career or anything like that, but it will still allow you to fly. Basic med is such a gift from the FAA. It's, people say it's like flying on your driver's license. It's not quite that easy, but basically, basic med says you earn it at your annual physical. And I hope y'all are doing annual physicals anyways, right? It's covered on your health insurance. At your annual physical that you're doing anyways, you give them some extra paperwork to do. Doctors love extra paperwork. Where are my doctors at? You love paperwork, right? You give them some extra paperwork to do. They fill it out. You submit it to the FAA, and you've got basic med, assuming you've earned an FAA medical at least once, third class at least once, and a special issuance in some cases. Please, please, please earn basic med. Magda and I are doing ours again here in July, I believe, when our annual physicals are due. You need to do basic med. Um, John Dela Cruz, you're right. Jason Cunningham says, I just renewed my third class last week. Go basic or wait. Jason, whenever you're, you're, you're home free, whenever your annual physical is, just do it then. You don't need to rush off to go do it. You got your medical, you're good. But go to, if something ever happens to you, if it's blood pressure, if it's sleep apnea, if it's these little, little things, and those are by no means little things, but they're little things that can slow you down from your dream, you can be real thankful you got something to fall back on. It's like when your parents told you to have a degree to fall back on, have a trade skill to fall back on, have something to fall back on. This is something to fall back on in aviation, and it's important to me uh, that you do it. All right? So, anyways, um, that's super. Okay. You thought medicals were deep. We're going to go a little bit deeper. All right, you ready? Here's our next question. Who can, what is a safety pilot? Who can be a safety pilot? Define a safety pilot for me. By the way, it's 9 p.m. I apologize for everybody who needs to go to bed. This is recorded, but just stick with me. Stick with me. Who can be a safety pilot? Define a safety pilot for me. What on earth is a safety pilot? Help me out here. What is it? Who can be or define a safety pilot? Stephanie, thank you for your humility. And you know what? Some people say this is an instrument pilot question, and it kind of is, but I disagree because as a private pilot, you can be a safety pilot, right? Well, I just gave you part of the answer. Who can be a safety pilot? What is a safety pilot? You answer this question any way your little heart desires. Steve Hammond, thank you for your humility. Donna, that's a good start. I like it. Timothy, good. Oh, oh, go up, go up, go up. I saw a good one. Hold on. Mike Hames, hold that thought. He said, I never tried since I was told you can't be a safety pilot under basic men. Mike, we're going to blow your mind 
in like three or four slides. Just, just, just hang in there. I know it's 9 p.m. Just hang in there. Hang in there. It's going to be worth it. Good, Ryan. There's our winner, William Cash. Still hanging out. Good. Chris Stater, smarter than the average bear. Good job. Hey, Season, good to see you. Good. That's a great answer. Adam, good answer. Kevin Cook said Eric Deagle is my safety pilot. Did you, is that real? That's dangerous. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'd like pick on Eric Deagle. Nick, thank you for your humility. Vincent, we're going to talk about that third class medical. We're going to, we're going to, I'll share some, some regulation on this one. You ready? All right, let me keep moving forward for time's sake. I know it's getting late here. Magda's, Magda's fading on me over there. All right, get that girl an espresso. Who can be and define a safety pilot? All right, well, let's go back. Let's go back. Let me take that slide down. Let's, what is a safety pilot? A safety pilot is Jason Larkin and I are going flying. Jason Larkin and making this up. Uh, he, uh, he's working on his instrument. Um, uh, actually, no, I take that back. Jason Larkin has his instrument, uh, has a gorgeous little uh, 172 and says, hey, Jason, your name's Jason, my name's Jason, we should go fly together. I said, duh, that makes perfect sense. He says, will you be my safety pilot? I need to practice some approaches under the hood, VFR. Well, Jason Larkin can't legally go up and fly with the hood on or with the foggles on and just look at his instruments, even if it's VFR, that's illegal. <laughs> Right, you gotta look outside. So he employs a safety pilot and says, hey, Jason, will you come along with me and be my safety pilot? What he's really saying is, will you be my eyes outside while I'm under the hood flying? And the answer is absolutely yes, I'd love to do that. Who can be a safety pilot? How do we log these things? That's what we're gonna get into real quick. So to act as that safety pilot, you must be at least a private pilot. I'm reading straight from 91109, by the way must be at least a private pilot. They, mu they must hold the category and class ratings. What's category and class? Airplane, category, single engine land, class, for that aircraft being flown, category and class. So private pilot, airplane, single engine land. All right, we got that. Must have a current medical. Let's come back to that as a second here because a safety pilot is defined as a required crew member. So the safety pilot must have a current medical certificate. That's from 61.3 paragraph C. And they must occupy the other control seat, normally, although not required, the right or co-pilot's seat. Okay, so that's what a safety pilot is, and that's what it takes to do it. Now, this opens up a slew of questions. For example, and you all asked this, you're right, some of you asked or thought or assumed you can't use basic men. I put this question here because I knew this would happen. Can I use basic men to act as a safety pilot rather than holding a medical since we just spoke about it? You ready? Only if you're acting as PIC while you're performing the duties of a safety pilot. So the statutory language prescribing basic med said it only applies to people acting as PIC. Basic med cannot be exercised by safety pilots who are not acting as PIC, but required crew members. What on earth? Can we break that into plain English? You ready? We said you have to be the same category in class. Airplane, single engine land. So let's actually use Jason Larkin as an example again. Jason Larkin flies a Cherokee 6. Okay. Um, Let's say it's a 300, not uh, matters because even the, even the 260 applies. Now, a Cherokee 6, the 300 is 300 horsepower. I have a problem. For the sake of the story, I'm a private pilot, airplane single engine land, but I don't have my high performance. It's 300 horsepower. Can I act as PIC? The answer is no, I, I don't have my high performance. I ha it, how can I act as PIC in something I don't have now the endorsements for? But people argue, but it's airplane single engine land. You're right, that's great, but it's high performance, or it's tailwheel, or it's complex, or it's just, it's an endorsement that I don't have. So with basic med, 
can I hop in Jason Larkin's Cherokee 6 without a high performance endorsement? The answer is no, because I cannot act as PIC. Can I, right? Can I do that? No, I, I, I cannot, I have to be able under basic med to exercise my privileges as PIC, and I can't do that with just a high performance. Do you understand that? Now, it gets even deeper, because David, you, you just teed me up perfectly for this. He said, but the safety pilot isn't PIC, right? I told you we're going deep, you ready? I'm gonna make a case, and I, I brought all the FAA jargon to back it up, where yes, the safety pilot is PIC. Yes, Jason Larkin is PIC. You are both, in some instances, logging PIC. You ready for this? PIC time can be logged if acting as PIC. The two pilots must agree that the safety pilot is acting as PIC. The PIC time may be logged only when the other pilot is under the hood. PIC time may be logged in accordance with 6151 as it allows certificated pilots to act as PIC of an aircraft of which more than one flight crew is required. More than one flight crew is required. Jason Larkin is under the hood right now. He is the sole manipulator of the flight controls. That's one of the FAA definitions of PIC. Jason Shappert is in the right seat and I'm his visual eyes outside. He cannot do this flight without me. We are required crew. I have my airplane single engine land and I have my high performance endorsement. I can act as PIC, but so can he. We are both logging PIC for the time that Jason is under the hood. When he's out from underneath the hood, I'm not logging as PIC time. But for the time he is under the hood, I am logging as PIC time. Now here's where it really gets crazy. Let's stick with the Cherokee 6 example. Now, Jason Larkin's flying his Cherokee 6 300 with someone who does not have their high performance. Private pilot, airplane, single engine land, no high performance endorsement. Well, they can be in the plane because they're airplane, single engine land. It just says category and class. But you can't log PIC time in an aircraft you're not endorsed for. You ready for the really mind blowing part? The person in the right seat that doesn't have their high performance is gonna log it as second in command time. You think that's, that's, that's stupid, Jay. How is that possible? You're gonna log second in command time in a Cherokee 6 or second in command time in a Satabria because you don't have your tailwheel. I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll back it all up here. There's an FAA letter in 1993 a gentleman named Steve Hicks sent in and the FAA responded like this, you ready? The office received your memorandum. I'm gonna read on down here. Here's the scenario. Two pilots, one private, one commercial, neither of which is a CFI, flying across country, VFR, taking turns under the hood. How does the safety pilot log his time since he is, re is a required crew person under the regulations as we just spoke about? All right, they continue on down, they explain it, they quote all the regs, and then they conclude, therefore, while it is not possible for two pilots to act as PIC simultaneously, it is possible for two pilots to log PIC flight time simultaneously. PIC flight time may be logged by both the PIC responsible for the operation safety of the aircraft during the flight time in accordance with FAR 1.1 and by the pilot who acts as the sole manipulator of the controls of which the aircraft is rated under 6151. It continues here, um, responding to your specifically to your inquiry, the pilot that is under the hood may log PIC time for that time, which is the sole manipulator of the controls. Now they get into the second command, you ready? Provided he or she is rated for that aircraft. The appropriately rated safety pilot may concurrently log second in command time, during which that time he or she is acting as the safety pilot. And it continues on to explain exactly what we said there. Again, if you wanna look this up, just type in the Steve Hicks safety pilot letter it'll come right up. Very, very popular letter, often, often um, quoted with this. Whose mind is blown a little bit right now? Are you gonna get into this level of detail on a check ride? Probably not, maybe a CFI level check ride. I don't know, Rex, did you get that deep on your CFI check ride? Where are my CFIs at? I, it's been a while since mine. I can't recall if we went that deep on safety pilot stuff, but I'm telling you, this is such an overlooked area, and a lot of you are missing out on valuable PIC time that you're trying to log anyways in pursuit of your hours um, when this is a great way you can
do that. All right? If you need me, go over it again. I'm happy to, but this recording is available with this. David said I need a hot tea. Hold on. He's right. He's right. Feel better. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder, David R. on YouTube. Okay. More questions. Let's, let's throw a softball out there. You ready? Hey, what is CFIT? What is CFIT? Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. What is CFIT? And by the way, Rex said, yes, sure did go into that level of detail on a CFI check ride. And again, I apologize for going so deep on that stuff. I, I love that. Maggie's telling me, speed it along there, Skipper. That's what she's saying. She goes, said, it's nine o'clock. I'm going, don't worry. What is CFIT? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, Jason Larkin, you got it. Yeah, Anastasia. Yeah, let's keep moving forward. Y'all got this. What is CFIT? CFIT is controlled flight into terrain. What does that mean in plain English? You fly a perfectly good airplane to the side of a mountain or terrain or something. Controlled flight into terrain. All right, I'm going to try not to go deep on these next ones. You ready? Define an aircraft accident. And I mean like per the FAA. Per the NTSB, define an accident. Define, define an aircraft accident. What is an accident? There is an actual, thank you, Craig, for your humility. There's an actual FAA definition to all of this. And I don't, what is, I need, how can I ask this better? What's an accident per the NTSB, per the FAA? And I realize the chat's like super laggy right now. I don't know if that's our internet or what it is. There's still a bunch of CFIT things coming in. <laughs> I like 10 West 626. Anything not an incident, Jason? Duh. Love it. That's actually not bad. That's actually, it's a little, it's a little creative. I like it. Ooh, Valletta. I like it. I like, I know you knew that one. Don't, don't give John any credit, okay? John Ballard, I love it. You ready? What's an accident? The FAA says it's an occurrence associated with the operation of an aircraft which takes place between the time any person boards the aircraft, here's the kicker, with the intention of flight, and all such persons have disembarked, and in which a person suffers, here's your words, serious, well, death, it's pretty serious, serious injury, or the aircraft receives substantial damage. So here's the criteria. What's an accident? Do you have the intent to fly and somebody, death occurs, serious injury, or substantial damage? Here is, I promise you, this will be the next question on your check ride because this is where they always go, those examiners. After you answer the question that way, they're going to ask you this. Huh. What's serious injury then? Define serious injury. You just told me, Rex, that an accident is anytime somebody has the intent of flight and is either killed, experiences serious injury, or the aircraft obtains substantial damage. What's serious injury? And then row, you're thinking row C on YouTube. You're, you're thinking ahead. I like it. What is serious injury? And I'm telling you, y'all might think I'm crazy. This will be on a commercial check ride all day long. Private pilot, I give you a 40% chance this is on your private pilot check ride. But I guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt, this is on your commercial pilot check ride. For the sake of time, I'm going to keep us moving forward, okay? Serious injury. Grab a screenshot of this. It's an injury which requires hospitalization for more than 48 hours, commencing within seven days from the date of injury was received. Results in, in a fracture of any bone except simple fractures, fingers, toes, nose. Causes severe hemorrhages, nerve, muscle, tendon damage. Involves any internal organ. 
involves second or third degree burns or any burns affecting more than 5% of the body surface. Grab a screenshot of that. Commercial pilots, this will be on your check ride. Private pilots, I give it a 40% chance. And that means I would know it. All right, then this only means there's one more question to ask with this. Define then for me substantial damage. We just said that the definition of an accident is anything that with the intent of flying, someone is killed, they are seriously injured, which we just defined, or the aircraft receives, receives substantial damage. So then go ahead and define for me the FAA NTSB definition of substantial damage. Chris asked a cool question. Well, gosh, that was a weird thing to say, Jason. Chris asked an interesting question. <laughs> if someone dies on board of natural causes, is that still considered an accident? I'm gonna put it out to the chat. Chris's question, let's show it. If somebody dies on board of natural causes, is that still considered an accident per the FAA? Yes or no, put it in the chat. While you all are putting yes or no in the chat, and Brady, that's a great answer there. Frank, got some great answers. Dave G, some great answers. Here's substantial damage. Substantial damage means damage or failure which adversely affects the structural strength, performance, or flight characteristics of the aircraft, and which would normally require, there's your word, Dave G, major repair or replacement of the affected component. Engine failure, damage limited to the engine. If only the engine fails or is damaged, bent fairings, cowlings, dented skin, small puncture holes in the skins, fabric holes, or fabric, ground damage to the rotor, propeller blades, and damage to the landing gear, wheels, tires, flaps, engine accessories. Again, this is all, you can find all this, and I believe it's part 49 is where all this comes. Substantial damage, substantial damage. All right. Let's see, I see, um, where do we find these definitions? So if you look in your FAR aim, you've got a tiny little sliver called NTSB 830, and you're gonna find that there. You can also Google all of it to get it to come up as well. NTSB 830 um, is where you're gonna find that. So Chris asked the question, he asked the question, I'm going back here, is it considered an accident if somebody dies, it's natural causes, on an aircraft, is it considered an accident? Let's read the definition of an accident again, real quick here, all right? An occurrence associated with the operation of an aircraft which takes place between the time someone boards, with the intent of flight, and all such persons have disembarked, and which any person, any person, suffers death or, not and, death or serious injury or in which the aircraft receives substantial damage. I see some of you said no because the aircraft doesn't receive substantial damage. Well, the word they use there is or, or. I'm gonna vote, Chris, that the answer is yes for a little bit until they do some investigation. They're gonna investigate it as a accident until autopsy results reveal that the flight was incidental, to use another word to it. So here's my point. I think the FAA and the NTSB is going to inquire it, and they're going to treat it like it is an accident. However, in order for it to actually be an accident, they need to suffer death because of the flight. I don't think it's gonna end up in the NTSB reports is my point of all that. I think if you search for it, um, it's, not gonna, it's, it's not gonna end up. Chad Cody, man, <laughs> I don't even know if it's funny, but it's, it, I'm laughing. He says, if it was a single pilot in the plane, it would, it would make the NTSB reports. So is the question, is it gonna make the NTSB reports? No, it's not gonna make the NTSB reports. All right, one more question, then I'm gonna dive into your questions. What are the domains of learning? This is an FOI question. I expect only 10% of you to even know what on earth I am talking about. What are the domains of learning? What are the domains of learning? And, and Catherine, to your point, you said, but the natural death is not associated with the operation of the aircraft. I, I totally agree. What I'm saying, Catherine, is 
The NTSB is going to say, the FAA is going to say, somebody died on an aircraft. Right now, this meets the definition of an accident. Then they go and they find out, hey, that person, you know, had a, you know, I don't know, internal bleeding they didn't know about and died. It just was coincidentally on the airplane. You're not going to be able to go in the NTSB's, you know, website and search for that accident. Uh, it's not going to end up becoming an accident. They are going to initially treat it like it's an accident until an autopsy comes back. And then you're right. They're not going to end up putting that in the NTSB reports. If you have absolutely no clue what the domains of learning are, it's because you haven't studied the fundamentals of instructing yet. FOI, what you need before you become a CFI. What, Holly said gag. Holly, this is exciting stuff, the domains of learning, come on. Eric Deagle, thank you for saving me. Frank, thank you. Chris Stater, future CFI, did you see that magnet? He just whipped that out like, I'm sure he didn't Google that or anything. Good job, look at you all. There's some smarter people, smarter than average bears out there. That's Yogi Bear that said that, right? I think so. Good job, Napoleon. All right, I put this one in here for one of our online ground school members, asked about this on the webinar today, and this is why we share these things. You ready? We'll have to take the chat down for this slide, Magda. What are the domains of learning? Shout out to all the CFIs is right. They are the cognitive domain, the affective domain, and the psychomotor domain. What on earth does all this mean? Well, what is the cognitive domain? The cognitive domain is simply your four levels of learning, right? We take things from a rote state, we then add understanding, we then apply them, we then correlate them. That's my, that's my domain, my cognitive domain. If I'm using the example of learning to ride a bike, I understand fundamentally how riding a bike works. I've got some rote memorization that these are the brakes, or I pedal backward, real bikes you pedal backwards on to stop, right? Back in the olden days. Um, or my brakes are here, whatever that may be, right? So I work, I, I, under, I, I kind of have a rote memorization, some understanding. I now correlate how this works with this. Okay, I, I, I've got this uh, uh, a little bit with all this. The affective now adds emotion to it. Well, all the other kids in the neighborhood are getting bikes, and I really, really want to, I don't want to be one of the kids without a bike in the neighborhood, right? This is so hard to track, but when you're working with learners, there are, we're learners now, we're not students anymore. When you work with learners, one of the most important things, CFIs, you can ask is, why are you learn to fly? What motivates you? Oh man, uh, the grandkids live in Tennessee and I live in Florida and it's just my dream to be able to fly up to see my grandkids four times a year. This drive is killing us, you know? There's no direct flights, that's, that's, that's my main dream. Well, you better believe I'm, make that, I'm, I'm gonna use that as a CFI. I'm gonna use that um, to motivate you. Back to riding a bike example, well, all the other kids are getting bikes for Christmas. I hope I get a bike for my birthday, and I, I want to be like all the other kids, too. So that's my motivation. I don't want to be without. That's my motivation. Then we go into the psychomotor, which is, well, I have the skills now. Do I have the physical motor skills to ride this bike? Do I have the physical motor skills for crosswind landings? Do I have that fine tune of my rudder pedals for slow flight? Whatever that may be. Those are the domains that we work through. We have to work it in our mind. We have to have a motivation of why, right? Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. CFIs, you should be starting with why. Why is this person even learning to fly? What's their purpose? What's their mission? You know, when we did all that work with Rusty Pilots for the movie we made a long time ago, Flying Again, of the eight Rusty Pilots we worked with, the one thing they all had in common is they all lost their purpose to fly. They all lost their why. It was a death in the family. It was a spouse that didn't want to fly with them. It was whatever it may be. They all lost their purpose. They lost their why. You as CFIs have to make sure your learners always have their why. And then lastly, you have to help them obtain and work through their motor skills with all of that uh, there as well. That is so, so important. So with that, M0 Nation, I, I need to give something away on that one. What, what do you want to give away, Magda? Somebody did good on that one. Um, I want to go, I, I got to go to Kevin Cook just because he's an Eric Deagle friend. I mean, Kevin Cook is our winner. What's Kevin Cook going to win? What do you want to give him, Magda? Tell me. She's going, she's giving away a tumbler. I mean, Eric Deagle is going to be so jealous, Kevin Cook. When you're a safety pilot, just, just take this with you, man. It, it'll make you a better safety pilot. Email Sarah. I'm a winner. Jason said so. And make sure you introduce yourself. Hey, y'all. It's me, Eric Deagle's friend, Kevin Cook.
it's, it's that important. All right, Emsray Nation. First off, thank you for playing full out. This is your time for questions. Anything is fair game. Everything is fair game. At, well, everything aviation related is fair game. How about that? Put your questions in the chat now if you have them. If you loved this, I do this every single Tuesday afternoon with our online ground school members. M0Atrial.com. M0Atrial.com. Take a two week free, no strings attached trial. Another, every Tuesday, we're doing webinars with our ground school members about this long as well, uh, just continuing to share aviation wisdom uh, with that. So let's open it up. Questions, comments, again, here to serve you all before you all leave. Please, please ask your questions. Craig, what happens if you lose the operator's manual or it's destroyed? You go right, you march right back to Wichita, sir, all the way from Sarasota, right? You march from Sarasota to Wichita and you tell them, I need another one. I'm sure you could call them too. Uh, and ask for another one uh, as well. Thor, yes, this will be published. As soon as we hang up here, this will process, uh, and then this will be up, so you can come back and check this out as well. Brooks asked, how much can I dig into my FAR aim during the oral exam? My friend, it's not an open book test, but it's a good skill to have to show the, the examiner that you know where to find stuff, that he or she can look and go, wow, this, this, this uh, Brooks guy knows, knows what they're up to, right? That's cool. Um, you won't be able to look up every question, but the ones you stumble on, you answer it this way. Hey, I, I used to know that, but more importantly, I know where to find it. And you look, show them that you know, you're resourceful and you know how to look it up. That's important. Donna Barrett Wood, thank you for the kind words. Hope to see you at Oshkosh. Um, Tyler, how should I properly study for my instant rate? I find it hard after my private pilot. Of course it's hard after private pilot, because now you can do all the fun stuff. You're like, man, I got to go back to flight training again. That's tough. Tyler, my recommendation is always get the ground school done first. You know from private pilot, the written test is the monkey on your back, it is the hardest thing to get done. Get that written test done, get your 50 hours PIC cross country time in that you need, everything else, get in the books, get studying, and then get into the flying portion of things. That'll help you so, so much as well. Uh, Amber, if attitude indicator fails, is an emergency declared? Well, Amber, are you in VFR or are you, or are you in IFR conditions? Um, if I'm in IFR conditions and I have a vacuum system failure, I'm going to ask for, I'm going to treat it as if it's an emergency because I don't mind. What if I declare an emergency and it ends up being not that bad? I got to do some paperwork. What if I declare an emergency and I get exactly the help and the vectors and everything else that I need and I, I save my life and my passengers' lives? If in doubt, always declare. Yeah, you'll have to do some paperwork. It, it's all good. Derek, why do I always fly right seat? Because the left seat is weird. That's why. Um, no, I always sit in the right seat. I remember I got thousands of hours of sitting in that right seat. My hands are used to just going one way. I can fly in the left seat. I just fly better in the right seat. You should, it's always funny when we pull up to an FBO and I'm like in the right seat by myself. They're, they're always confused. They go over to Magda and they go, that's a really great landing. I think she didn't land that one. Jeez, I'm teasing. Um, wow, Chris Ritchie, what happens when there's an aircraft for sale but no log books? I think you take 40 to 50% off the price. And I know the market's hot and crazy right now, and somebody probably won't go for that. But let me tell you something, Chris Ritchie. I know you've seen the show Airplane Repo. Mag and I are good personal friends of, of Mike and Valerie Kennedy. Um, what a, what, and, and I know the show's dramatized too, but what do they always go back for? The log books. If you don't have complete log books, you don't have complete value of that plane. You just don't know what happened to it. The log books are everything, that airplane. I would not recommend, uh, I would not recommend buying an airplane without, uh, without complete log books with that. All right, try, there's a ton of comments here. I'm gonna try to get to as many as I can. Um, let's, uh, let's see, uh, let's find some here. Can you attempt, Nathan, yes. Can you attempt a medical before you start to ensure you pass? Nathan, yes, 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 I love this. Here's my dream, Nathan, that everybody, if you don't have a private pilot blueprint, you know you can go to privatepilotblueprint.com. I told you I wasn't gonna do a lot of selling tonight, but privatepilotblueprint.com, get a copy. And what I recommend in the private pilot blueprint is that you can go do a discovery flight to make sure you really like flying. Then go do your ground school, get your written test done, get your medical done. Because like you said, what if there's an issue? And you don't have to share it if you don't want to, but
but type in me in the chat whoever had a medical issue that they had to fight the good fight through. And who knows what I mean when I say you're fighting the good fight? Because Oak City is not an easy place to fight sometimes over stupid, stupid things. They don't respond quick. They give you vague responses back when they do respond. It's stinky to have to fight the FAA when it comes to medical stuff. I've seen solo after solo get delayed. That person is more than ready for their solo, but they don't have a medical yet, so they can't actually solo. Get your medical now, my friend. Um, Ron, what do I bring to the doctor to get basic med? Um, just search, uh, I don't know the exact URL, but search FAA basic med, and they'll give you, it's like a two or three page document you print out and you bring to the doctor with that, all right? Um, wow, uh, on YouTube, username WhiteRider99, any recommendations to prevent uh, aviation burnout when money is tight? My friend, there are only two killers of flight train dreams, time and money. Time and money are the two killers of flight train dreams. And you may know somebody who has the time but doesn't have the money, or somebody who has the money and doesn't have the time. It either will kill them, and you have to have a balance between the two. If you're worried about wallet burnout, my friend, you need to make sure you have a budget in place to set aside training for your flying, because nothing is worse. And I had this happen to learner after learner sometimes. They'd get through solo, they'd be, and then they get in the cross-country phase, and things get exponentially more expensive. Who knows what I mean when I say, exponentially more expensive when you get in the cross-country phase of your private pilot certificate and they weren't ready for it and they ran out of money and they were a rusty student pilot because they didn't budget appropriately. You've got to budget appropriately. All right. Let's find some more here. Um, look at all the people have that had medical issues. I'm telling you. Oh, I love Derek. He says, I have a medical issue, an overactive immune system. Well, strong arm. I love it. I love it. All right. Riyadh asks, do you know when the ACS is coming out for the CFI check rights? If I did, I, I wish my crystal ball would tell me. I don't know. And, and we have an inside track on some of that stuff, and I do not know. Jesse, yes, you can still do your flight train while you're waiting for a medical certificate. Absolutely, you can. Craig said, by the way, 204 bucks an hour for aircraft rental right now. I, I, and I just paid... Don't tell Magda, Magda, cover your ears. I just paid $9.04 for 100 low lead the other day. Cover your ears, Magda. Thanks. All right, let's find some, just a few more questions. John Dela Cruz wants to know if I got in my boat yet. No, but everyone keeps asking me. I did share a story about my original boat on the webinar today, but you gotta be a ground school member to know the story, mzuratrial.com. Okay, can I log hours, John Diaz wants to know, on a demo discovery flight? Absolutely, assume that person giving you that discovery flight is an actual CFI, which I hope they would be. Yes, you tell them, hey, I bought a logbook, sign it, I paid you, <laughs> you sign this, that's my first hour, well, my first point five, right? Someone asked, where can you get the mugs? You cannot, they are, they are, there's a, an elite group of mug holders that either won them or earned them through membership. That is the only, only way. This is, this is a coveted, coveted mug, right? So um, anyways, let's see. Uh, Andrea says, if you have high blood pressure, are you disqualified? Who knows the number? I don't have the Aviation Guide to Medical exam Examiners around here. There's a magic number. What's the, what is the too high number? Where is it, where's the break on the, I don't even know, systolic and diabolic? I don't even know what the two numbers are called. My mom's cringing. She's a nurse. She goes, Jason, I taught you that. I don't remember, mom. I'm sorry. Um, username Nuji. Any tips for getting back in a train after a long break? Well, it depends how long the break is. The FAA recommends one hour of flight for every year you've been out of it. My friend, they say it's like riding a bike. That's not totally, totally true. The thing that's going to leave you is, is the cognitive part. Who should I be talking to now? How do I program that GPS? What should I be doing? How do I do that again? The motor skills come back much more quickly than the knowledge. Oftentimes, uh, a great way to get back into it is by pursuing another rating, diving in and getting your instrument, or even just earning tailwheel or something else like that. By the way, and, and Mark said, this, I, I don't, the number escapes me, uh, 155 and 95, those are our high numbers. Uh, I, I don't know that for a fact, but m judging by Mark's profile picture, he looks very, very smart. So I'd say he's probably right. Um, love you, Mark. John Hernandez, Jason, you have boot camps like the written test. 
but for the, and then it cut off. I assume you mean check ride. So yes, you know we have the private pilot and instrument pilot written test prep boot camps. We also have our check ride books. Where are my check ride book readers or listeners? I prefer the listeners on Audible. I think that makes the most sense, but you can still get paperbacks, eBooks, everything else uh, as well with that. Um, private instrument commercial. Just search Jason Shepard on Audible. They come right up. But like Jesse says it's systolic and diastolic, not diabolical. I was wrong. But I was, I was, I was close. I was, I was close. Um, and it was backwards, but we knew what you meant, Mark. 155 and 95. Those are your numbers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Those are your numbers. Okay, good to know. Good to know. All right. Last call. Questions. Last, last call. Michael J. McMurray. Uh, by the way, if you need a Tom Cruise lookalike for your, for your birthday party, Michael J. McMurray is your man, if you haven't seen it in the Missouri Nation. Hey, by the way, if you are not in the Missouri Nation on Facebook, you need to be. By the way, make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Find time to ask that now during the questions. But Coach Ray's saying, darn it, Jason, you should have said that sooner. I remember things on occasion. Do subscribe on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, too, so you keep getting more great updates with this. Listen, it is 935. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. we got to fix one thing. we got to fix one thing. Freddie. We've got a screenshot for Freddie. Freddie said, I ordered your other book and I haven't got it. Which one, Freddie? Is it Aviation Mastery or, or the Private Pilot Blueprint? Which, which of the two? Uh, and I will screenshot that and send that to Sarah because Sarah said all books are out. So there could be some issues. Or email Sarah. Yeah, there you go. Email Sarah at Missouri. Sarah physically hand ships all those books. So shoot her an email, Freddie, as well. All right, listen. It is 936. I didn't get to be six foot four by not getting eight hours of sleep. So I need to go to bed. And, and so do you all as well, especially some of y'all got check rides coming up. But seriously, I want to say thank you. Thank you uh, for coming here, spending an hour and 36 minutes and playing full out. I meant what I said earlier. My prayer before this, my prayer before every, every video is to save just one life. And it's a stat we'll never be able to track unless you realize it and tell us that, which has happened before, oddly enough. Uh, and I believe even doing a mock check ride, we can accomplish that. I know I get on some tangents. I know I geek out on some aviation knowledge and stuff. And, and that's, that's just my personality. I hope that that fits with you. And if you love that personality and you love that level of detail, I encourage you to check out the online ground school because it, it's just, it is a deep dive in everything. We don't scratch the surface. I want to say our private pilot course is like 27 hours. Like we, that doesn't include quizzes. We go deep in everything. If you are the learner who is looking for more, if you are the learner who is pursuing mastery in everything you do, well, you just found your community then. You got it. So hang out with us there. Listen, have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your night. And tomorrow, go out there and be a light. You are like the 1% of the 1%. You fly hunks of metal and carbon fiber through the air. That's, that's pretty, pretty cool stuff. Be a light and be humble about it in the meantime as well. I hope to see you all at Oshkosh in person to get back to better than normal, back to like shaking hands and hugging and taking pictures and everything else because I'm all about that. Have that blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your night. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see ya.